In this first part, and I say first part because, of course, that suggests there will be a part two, uh, we're going to take a look at a fairly simple example. It's still going to take a bit of work, but not too, too much, where I, I really like the look of this photo, except for this harsh shadow. It's really not very interesting. It really doesn't add much to the photo. So I'm going to see if we can't try to make it less obvious, or even, if we're lucky, remove it completely. So to start off, as you can see, I'm just making a very basic broad selection, not even trying to select it, basically just surrounding it. Then I'm going to go to Select Color Range. And once this color range is open, because I've made an initial selection, basically it's only going to look inside that area. So now I just have to click on the shadow. And as I move this slider, this is the way it works. Let me zoom in a bit on this so you can see what's happening. Basically, whatever is white is going to represent the selection. Whatever is black will not be selected. So as I move this slider, I want to get pretty good areas of white. But if I go too far, you see now it's starting to get some of the surrounding areas. I need to get a kind of a nice happy medium, probably something like that. Maybe just a hair lower. Actually, that's probably good where it was, 90-ish. Seemed to be pretty good. And then click OK, and you'll see now that you have the selection of just the area that you wanted. You might notice a few little trickles here and there that you don't want, so I've got my lasso tool with the Option or Alt key. I can just kind of select around those to say don't include that in there. That's fine. Now the other thing you can do if you're ever unsure of how your selection is going to look, press Q for Quick Mask and whatever is red means the parts that are not selected, wherever you can see your original selection will tell you. So you can this way you can kind of see what's going on. And the other nice thing about Quick Mask is if you decide you want to, you should have feathered this selection, rather than uh, use the feather command and not be exactly sure what you're going to get, in Quick Mask you can choose Gaussian Blur and look at the edge and then decide whether you want it feathered a lot or just a, add just a little tiny bit of feather to the edge. Okay. And then I press Q again to get out of Quick Mask and now I have my selection. At this point I'm going to press Command or Control J to put it on its own layer. Now the next step I could use an adjustment layer if I wanted to. I'm not going to in this case. I'm just going to press Command or Control U for hue saturation, but I could also add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm focusing my attention, of course, on this area because that's the layer that I'm currently on. And all we're going to do is change the lightness and then the saturation. When you lighten things up, generally you have to put a bit of saturation back in. And you'll see as I do, you can get pretty darn close to the same color. Now, don't be distracted. There's often you'll see like in here a little line there, but we'll deal with that in a second. So this is sort of the eyeball. That looks pretty good. I'm looking over this area in particular. looks pretty good. Click OK. Now, if this was, I was 100% sure I want to do this, I could merge down to make it back to one layer. What I'm going to do instead, just as a backup plan, is press Command, Option, Shift, E, which would be Control, Alt, Shift, E on the PC, which will make a merged copy of those two. So I still have these two layers. And then I'll use the clone stamp tool. And all I'm going to do is put the opacity somewhere in probably this 75 percent range. Let's make the brush just a hair bigger. And basically try to make that line there that we're seeing a little less obvious or ideally go away completely. Something like this. So we're just kind of cloning it without a reason I'm going 75% as I want to make it pretty subtle so it's not obvious that I've suddenly uh, done this extra line here. Now at a certain point if you notice for example that there's a bit of a line here that's more obvious in some places than others you could start to add some of that back in. But you get the idea. Now I don't know I think that looks pretty good actually considering it only took a few moments and that's certainly a whole lot better than let me just hide these when it started off like this. Pretty easy to do. Now in this case it was quite simple. In part two I'll show you what you do when you have a bit more, a bit of a, more of a challenge including a more noticeable pattern in, in the area you're trying to lighten. So we'll take a look at that next time. Hopefully you'll find in, in many of your photos this can be enough what we just did here but we'll look in part two of a couple of other steps you can do if need be to make it look even more realistic. So you can end up with whatever the look that you want for your wall or whatever your photo might be of. I'm Dave Cross. I shall see you next time.